Hi, on Friday night, I went on opening day, nearly, to see Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, the latest Marvel Cinematic Universe film. It follows on from the events of Spider-Man No Way Home, where we saw the opening of uh, gateways to the multiverse and different versions of characters bleeding through from other dimensions. Now we have uh, a character arriving in the Marvel world uh, who can seemingly jump between multiverses, um, and she seeks help from Doctor Strange with having come from a, another universe where that version of Strange was helping her. Uh, Strange in turn seeks help uh, for magic purposes from uh, Wanda Maximoff, who is uh, paying penance for her activities in the WandaVision TV series from which this follows. And together they have to uh, confront uh, an evil force that is threatening the nature of the existence itself. Now, it's hard to talk about the film in too much detail without immediately going into spoilers. Uh, the film's promotional campaign was very careful to avoid saying too much, to just give a flavour of scenes uh, and not give too much detail about what was going to be happening. So I'm going to try and do that here and then to break off for uh, spoilers later on. Um, overall, I found it to be middle upper tier Marvel, um, top of the second division, I would say. It did feel a little bit like connective tissue, it, although it, the scale of the story is... Um, I mean, almost on a par with Endgame, really, with a threat to the entire multiverse, um, it still felt quite small scale. And it does feel like a very tight film. Uh, without the credits, it's less than two hours long. Um, but nevertheless, it felt fairly tight, fairly focused, engaging, enjoyable. Most prominently, it's um, directed by Sam Raimi. A legend started out as uh, directing The Evil Dead, um, then moved on to the Spider-Man movies, and is, of course, now the only Marvel Cinematic Universe director to have been prosecuted in the UK under the Obscene Publications Act. Um, with Multiverse of Madness, he lends some of his kinetic visual styling and his uh, horror history um, to the continuum, and it works extremely well. He really has a feel for this. He loves comic books. He has a, a real flair for um, the visual style of storytelling, very bold, very bright. Um, we have the obligatory Bruce Campbell cameo, unfortunately not as any kind of major character, but still fun to see him again. Um, and really that's all I can say without giving much away. Um, so I would recommend it, but it's not top tier Marvel. So manage your expectations and you'll have a great time. Now, um, the villain of course turns out to be fairly on, uh, Wanda herself, who plans to break through um, the multiversal barrier and find a universe where she can settle down with the two children that she conjured up in WandaVision. Um, and nothing is going to stop her from doing this. Her immense power and um, almost maniacal level of uh, self-absorption um, um, means that she's almost without uh, any kind of barrier to her behaviour. Um, I'm trying to think of some, but also, and also there are all the cameos and things like that. Um, but uh, it was interesting to have a character who had a much more um, down-to-earth motivation. She wants the family that she believes was taken from her. Um, but it's left up to Strange, who is a loner, a difficult person by his own admission, to try and show her that this is not how it can go. And so Strange has to raise himself up to, to meet her level of thinking, her level of emotional thinking. Um, so that creates an interesting dynamic. Um, the relationship he has with uh, America Chavez, the, um, the multiversal um, power jumper, uh, is interesting. There's, uh, as with Spider-Man before, it's very much a, a master-student relationship that is almost forced on him. But they have a, a very sweet, um, slightly antagonistic, but rather charming interplay. And um, the actress, um, whose name I've already forgotten, sorry, uh, I thought was rather winning in the role. Um, and then, of course, we have all the cameos. Um, 
Strange and one of the visits to another uh, multiverse, mother, another universe, is brought before the Illuminati who control uh, pre uh, to prevent incursions from one universe into another. And they are a raft of uh, appearances from new iterations of established uh, Marvel characters. So as given away in the trailer, we have Professor Xavier from the X-Men films played by Patrick Stewart. We have Captain Carter, a super soldier version of Peggy Carter, originally appeared in um, the What If animated series and still played by Hayley Atwell. We have a different version of uh, Captain Marvel, played by Lashana Lynch. We have uh, Black Bolt, played by Anson Mount, who's had a banner week, being uh, the captain of the new Star Trek series, uh, revived from the very short-lived Inhumans TV series. And finally, and most uh, uh, kept quietly um john krasinski as reed richards of the fantastic four casting that had been rumored a long time ago um but i knew no no confirmation of whatsoever until he was actually there on the screen and the audience gasped um very pleased to see him excellent casting and then as we saw he is a, a great fit for the character um uh, and the cl concluding uh, uh post credit scene uh, we we're introduced to another new character played by Charlie's Theron, uh, who, after a quick Google, it turns out is a, another sorcerer from the Dark Dimension, uh, who will go on to have a major impact on Strange's life. So that looks towards where the series is going next. Um, it's. I, I said I said to a friend that it reminded me of the Doctor Who serial Attack of the Cybermen, um, which was a sequel to three or four previous Cyberman stories, um, as well as having numerous references that the faithful would get and the casual viewer wouldn't understand or wouldn't be interested in. The difference here, though, is that it seems to work here. Attack of the Cybermen is famously a car crash. Um, but Multiverse of Madness, I think everything sort of fits together. Um, so you don't need to have remembered everything from the What If series. You have to be vaguely aware of what happened in WandaVision without actually necessarily seeing it. And the big thing that happened in, in the end of WandaVision, namely the resurrection of Vision in a, uh, a new form, goes completely unmentioned. As far as Wanda is concerned, Vision is still dead. Um, so, again, I can only reiterate my opinion. It's pretty good. It's not top-tier Marvel. Um, but for a Friday night, you'll have a good time. And for a Sam Raimi movie, this feels a lot like a Sam Raimi movie. 